Hello, beautiful creatives. It is Michelle with Inner Journey Studios, and I am here to share with you a fun tutorial, a mixed media one, which means we're using a bunch of different things, not just acrylic paints. We'll be using some watercolors and markers and uh, some bubble wrap in here and a few little odds and ends along the way um, to create this page. Let me pull this open for you. We are going to be working to create this Honeycomb Dreams mixed media art journal page today. So you don't have to have everything I have. Let me just preface that by saying you don't need to have all of the things. Mixed media really is a fun genre to play in because you can use what you have use the colors you have, use the materials you have. If you don't have watercolors, that's fine. Use your acrylic paints. If you only have watercolors, use just those. Um, you can use pastels, oils, soft pastels, um, water-soluble crayons, uh, really anything goes. Gouache, whatever you have, go ahead and use it. I'm going to be sharing how I'm making mine with the materials that I have, but I'm just using what I have on hand. That's why I've chosen these. So feel free to substitute and to make this your absolute own um, as you go along. So as we're getting started, I would love to hear in the comments, let me know who's watching. Um, and I'd love to hear where you are from. So just to share to start things off. Um, as I said, I'm Michelle with Inner Journey Studios, and I am coming to you live today from um, Claremont, Florida. So I am in the heart of Florida near Disney World in that general area, not too far from Orlando. So that is where I am. And I'm live if you're watching me today. Otherwise, it might be a replay. But either or, this is going to be a fun tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's get started. Let me get, um, let me figure out how to do this. There we go. Now you've got my studio view. So let me share with you what I am using to create with. Gloria, how are you from Memphis? You know I love Memphis. Every time I hear that, I think of the song, what is that, Walking in Memphis? I was walking in Memphis. Um, so I always think of that. And when I hear that song, I always think of you. So there you go. All right, so what I am using today, get some of this out of the way. I am working in one of my art journals today. It's a nine by 12. You don't have to work in an art journal. You can be working on a canvas. You can do this on um, pretty much anything. You can do it on watercolor paper, Bristol, cardstock, whatever you have. I will say a heavier paper, like a mixed media paper or a watercolor paper does tend to work better when you're doing mixed media work um, if you are throwing a lot of wet medium on it, which I am doing today. So um, I do find either a watercolor or a mixed media paper tends to work best. Um, all right. That just went out for a minute. Hopefully this will work for me today. So let me go ahead and get a fresh page. Where's my fresh page? This is fresh enough. We're going to use this one. Let me move a few things out of the way. Y'all behind the scenes, I'm a little bit of a mess here. I got stuff everywhere in my studio. All right. I haven't been in here all weekend and I was like, oh, probably should have cleaned before I got on. That's okay. All right, so I've got a fresh sheet. And one of the things that I like to do before I start doing my art is I like to light a candle as a little bit of an intention to, this lets me know, this kind of lets my brain know, when I light this candle, this is my art time. So it personally helps me to focus a little bit. It helps me to come into my art space, um, which is, really not about the physical space, but more about the mental space. Um, and it pulls me out from the, you know, the quote unquote real world, the physical world, the demands of the everyday, all the things. So I like to light my candle. 
I don't do anything special. I just light it. If I'm on my own, um, not doing a video, I will often also put music on. Um, and I just set this to the side, trying to be careful that I'm not going to burn any of my cords or anything, because I always have a lot going on here. Um, and I just let that burn through my session, and it just helps me to focus and to remind me that this is my time to create. Okay, so you're going to need a substrate. You will want a copy of the B, or you can freehand it. You can do your own. Now, I did this one on cardstock, which is a little heavier because pull the other B up here. Oh my gosh, I found it right away before and now I can't find her. Ah, here we go. Um, I don't know how well you can tell, but this is actually raised up off of the page. So this is not glued entirely down. You could totally glue it down, but I've got mine popped up a little bit. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. If you don't have the adhesive, um, uh, adhesive squares, you can just glue it right down and that'll work fine also. But I've got mine popped up. So I like to use a little heavier paper. You could also print this on water paper or, um, you know, uh, Bristol or whatever you have, but I just use cardstock, which will work. And then I also have printed the sheet of honeycomb. Now this is all found. Um, I will add it to this video when I'm done. So if you're watching on replay, it should be in the description. If you are in the online paint party group, you will find this in the event. I've got it listed in the description in the event there. Um, but if not, if you're in one of my other groups, it will be, uh, the links will be available for both of these after the video. So this is gonna be our tracer. This is gonna be, um, we're gonna actually cut paint and cut out on this one. Uh, you'll want some tracing paper. You will want some paint. We've got white, yellow, uh, red. Let me get my thing here. Okay, we've got some hot pink, neon pink, some black, some red. I've got my watercolors. It does not matter what brand or what kind you have. Mine are a mixture of different brands and different kinds in here. I make my own palette. So you'll want like a red and a yellow, I think is what I had. Yellow and black, maybe. I'll double check. Um, you'll want a black marker, a thin black marker. Um, if you have a white one, you might want a white one. If you have it, a Stabilo Mark All. This is not needed, but it's nice if you have it. A ballpoint pen, scissors, some matte medium or other adhesive. These are the, well, they're not squares. Mine are actually honeycomb. How perfect. Um, but, oh, sorry. There we go. But some sort of um, foam adhesive type thing that we'll be using for our B. Okay. And then the basics. Water, uh, paint brushes, paper towels. Oh, bubble wrap. If you have any bubble wrap, I'll show you how to use that as a stamp. Um, I think that I also have listed like some book pages or something like that. I forgot to grab mine up here. So I'm just going to use some ephemera I have laying around. You can use whatever you have. I'll be using some, so some collage papers, whatever that looks like for you. I've got these here. And I think that's it. So what I would like to start with is let's go ahead and start with the B. And I'm gonna set this aside for the moment. Um, I wanna start with this one. So when we look at our sample of the B, we can see that the B has some yellow in here. It has a little bit of like an orangey color in here. Um, and then some lighter yellowish white here. So basically we're gonna use a lot of yellow and watered down yellow on this. And then I'm not going to do all of this today. This actually takes time to do, but I'll get you started and then you can finish this kind of on your own. 
as you will, but we'll get it started today. So that's what we're gonna start with. We will go ahead and grab your watercolors. And mainly on this, we're gonna be using yellow. So I'm gonna grab a brush. Um, any brush you have will do. Let's see, I'm gonna use, I actually think I'm gonna use this one. All right, I'm using a Filbert, like a number 10 Filbert. Oh, thank you. And paper towel, where's my paper towel? Here we go. All right, sorry, it's not nice and new. I'm a firm believer of using these until they are like done, done. So I reuse my paper towels until I can't use them anymore. All right, so we're gonna take a little water and we're gonna get that right on top. Now my yellow is definitely contaminated. I am not the neatest painter when it comes to my watercolors. And if I'm being honest, I just sort of hope for the best. So we'll see what comes out of this. So what I did is I just laid some water on top of my watercolor. And I let that kind of set in a little bit to start to activate it. If you're using a liquid watercolor or some other type of watercolor, you might have a different process. But for, for this kind, mine is pretty solid. Um, I just lay the water on top. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm just going to paint. I'm just going to keep this simple and paint this pretty much all yellow. The black of the bee we're going to get from putting our markings on it, from putting our... Um, our doodles in it. Now here's the fun part. I don't cut this out until I'm done with it. And the reason is it makes it a lot easier for me to not worry about going out of the lines. So it's not that I'm trying to paint um, messy, but you know, if I don't have to worry about it, I don't want to worry about it. All right. I still try to stay in, but like there, I went out a little bit. I'm gonna cut around that so it just doesn't matter. All righty. And the same for the doodling on it. I just keep it, I don't cut it out till I'm done with the doodle and everything. And that way I just don't really have to worry about if I go out of the lines a little bit. It makes it so much quicker and easier and less stressful. It also is a lot easier to doodle and paint on a big sheet of paper than if you cut this out and you have this little guy you're trying to work with. That can be a little challenging. All right, now for this next part for the wings, I actually want this fairly watered down. I don't want a lot of color on this. And by the way, if I, I think I said this already, but if I didn't use whatever watercolors you have, they do not have to be the same ones I have. I think on the first one I did, I did that a while ago. I actually think I used Crayola watercolor on those. So you can get some really good color even using an inexpensive set. It does not have to be anything fancy. I mean, by all means, if you want a fancy set, I will enable you to buy that. Um, you just let me know. I love my art supplies, and I'm always happy to have somebody join me in that obsession. Um, but I also know that art supplies are expensive, and especially if you're new to a type of art, you might not want to spend a lot, and that's okay when you're first starting. All right, so if you can see, I did a little lighter up here, and all that means is I used more water. Um, what kind of paints, watercolor do I have? All right, that is a great question. Mine is actually one that I created myself. So 
I have been doing this long enough that I knew there were certain colors I wanted for the way that I paint. I do a lot of, um, a lot of like plein air painting and urban, uh, what do we call it? Urban sketching and stuff like that. Like where I go out of my house and paint. So I kind of knew the color palette I wanted to work with. And so some of my colors are uh, from a couple of different Jan Davenport uh, palettes that I had. I popped those out and I don't even know offhand which ones. That one I know is one of hers and this one I know is one of hers. Um, so a couple of those are hers. I have one or two that I think are Daniel Smith. I have a couple of them that are, what is the other brand? You know what? I don't remember offhand because I, I actually bought them according to the color, not the brand. So I will, when I'm done with this, let me make a note for myself. When I am done with this, I will look and let you know exactly what brands I have. Um, let me just write that down. A lot of it will depend on, um, I would say, to look at how you use your watercolors. So I have one set of watercolors that I absolutely love. Um, I very often will use those when I'm doing my mixed media at home. And I love them. But they come in this big box and they're all loose in there. So it is not at all conducive to use those for traveling. They are like when I'm sitting at my desk only. Um, these ones particular were for traveling because I knew I wanted a set that I could take anywhere with me. Although I will say if you have a tin like this in your purse, any metal detector you go through, you will end up being searched. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Every time I go to Disney, it happens. Um, okay, so enough on that. Basically, I have a variety of watercolor uh, brands that I use. I will let you know in the comments um, after the live. I will, or not in the comments, in the description. I will um, share what I use. Great question. Thank you. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is let this dry. It's pretty wet right now. <clears throat> and I don't want to put my markers on here while it's wet. So we started with this. Let's set that aside. And now... You can see we have a lot going on in our background here. There is just a lot that is happening. And so we need to, sorry, I'm trying to multitask here. Uh, we're gonna have a lot of yellow in here, a little bit of orange and some hot pink mainly. Um, and then I'll show you how to do the honeycombs and all of this. Now, the fun thing about mixed media is they will all look different. So I urge you, don't try to get yours to look like mine. Mine isn't even going to look like mine. The one that I do today will look totally different than this one, I guarantee you. It will not even look the same. So have fun with it. Don't worry about it. Don't try to get it to look the same. Um, try to get it to look like yours. And so let's go ahead. Let's get back to our page. We rinse out that. Okay, so now initially I used book paper and I had said to have that for you, I think, in the supplies. But as is not unusual, I forgot to bring my book pages up. I have a couple of books that I always use to pull pages out of. And I forgot to bring those. So I'm going to just use some collage paper I have instead of book paper. And this is, again, this is illustrating perfectly how you can just use what you have. You don't have to use what I use. No matter what you use, it's going to work out great. So we're going to take our matte medium. We're going to have these. And then before I start... I like to take a pen, Let's see if I have a ballpoint one here. I think I just have the ink ones. All right, if you have a ballpoint, I recommend that. The ink ones will smear, they'll activate with the water. 
Um, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use it anyway because that is how I roll. Um, and I want to put some intentions on the page. So when I'm art journaling, a lot of times it's about it's about my day. It's about, even though the end product might not reflect, hey, this is my day in a um, very realistic way of presenting it, the energy of the page will definitely show what's going on in my life right now. So my intention with this is I'm trying to gain some clarity in my life around a couple of situations. So I'm going to put clarity on there. Um, I am trying to create some focus in my mind because I've been feeling overwhelmed and, you know, things are kind of scattered. Um, <clears throat> so I've got this now. Again, yours should be whatever it is for you. So let's just take a minute. If you're working with me, you can take a minute to write on your page. If you're just watching and following along, maybe jot down some things that you're wanting to call into your life or what your intentions are for today, even if you're not art journaling. It can be about what your intention is for today. So I'm going to be quiet just for a moment. I'm going to write some things down and then we will move down and I hope you'll join me with this. Okay, that was just a minute to jot down a few things. Now, sometimes if I'm doing this all on my own, I will take the time and I'll actually write on the entire page. I'll just cover it with thoughts and intentions. And I use it as like a type of journaling and then I art over it. So sometimes it's a way of transforming those thoughts, um, you know, into like if, if I'm going through a rough time, I might use this as a time to get all of that gunk out of my brain and then use this as a time to transform it. Um, sometimes I use it for joyful things, for prayer, for goal setting. It can be whatever you want it to be. So for today, mine is just some reflection, some intention. Excuse me while I open my sparkling water to get a drink. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so now that I have those, I'm going to use some of my matte medium. On my palette. Ooh, it's time to order some more. Um, I often get asked about matte medium versus can I just use Mod Podge? You know, matte medium is expensive. Um, I'd rather, you know, Mod Podge is inexpensive. So here's my answer to that. The short version is, yeah, you can use whatever you want. It's your art. It's your art journal. Use what you have. I always say use what you have. Um, and also buy what makes sense for you. Spend the money where it makes sense. So for me, I prefer matte medium. Does not matter the brand. I've used Liquitex. I've used Golden. I've used store brands before. Um, it doesn't matter. I just like the matte medium. And here's why I prefer this. Matte medium, when it dries, it is not sticky. It does not leave a um, sticky feeling to it. Therefore, my pages are less likely to stick together in my art journal which is important to me because when I've used other types of similar adhesives that are less expensive, um, they're great for arts and crafts. Like I use them for arts and crafts, but to use it in my art journal, my pages stick together awful. Like they just, they just do. 
Um, whereas with the matte medium, I have a lot less issue with that. Uh, there's less water in here. It tends to be more concentrated. So my pages don't buckle as bad from that. Um, when I'm using it to put down media or uh, to put down paper in that, the paper tends not to crinkle as much. So for my art journals and for my artwork, when I'm doing collage, I exclusively use some sort of medium, either a matte medium, sometimes I use a glossy medium or a soft body medium. You know, it'll depend on the application, but probably 80% of the time, unless it's something specific, I'm using matte medium. Okay. So, but use what you have, use a glue stick, use whatever you want. This is what I'm using. I'm also going to use my um, one inch uh, silicone applicator foam thing. I call it a brush. It's not really a brush. Um, I've for years bought these on Amazon. Uh, now I've found them at Hobby Lobby uh, for, you know, around the same price. So I can buy them in person and I love it. Here's why I love it. I don't ruin my brushes, y'all. I try to take care of my brushes, but the reality of it is getting matte medium out of it. I often just don't do a good job and then it ends up ruining my brush because it like it it's an adhesive. So my brushes get like glued together. Um, whereas this, I can just peel it off, let it dry, peel it off, and I'm good to go. All right. So enough talk. I am very chatty today. I had my coffee. It is early in the day. I have adults to talk to now. Thank you. Uh, feel forward. Feel free to for pass forward if you're watching this on replay through any of my chatty parts. I get it. It's not everybody's cup of tea, um, but hopefully you are enjoying yourself. I like to give a lot of information, especially with mixed media, because a lot of times people don't know. Like acrylic paints, we kind of know, but with mixed media, we don't always know. There's a lot that goes on with mixed media and the different supplies we're using. So. I like to make sure that you are in the know. All right, so I am just getting some collage fodder put together. These are some painted pages that I've done. I often like to make my own collage fodder instead of using like scrapbook pages or that. Those work great too, but um, I love making my own. And that's what I did here. If you want to know more about doing that, you can check out Inner Journey Studios, my business page. Um, so that is really, um, I've got, sorry, my brain just got sidetracked. Um, Inner Journey Studios, my Facebook page, I have some tutorials on there on how to create collage fodder. I just use y'all, this is just regular copy paper. And look how fabulous we can transform it into these really cool pieces of collage that we can use for our artwork. Uh, no problem, I'm done. So you're keeping me company. Oh, yay, I'm glad, thank you. And you're keeping me company, so thank you for that. All right, so lots of different ways that you can glue these on. You can, if you have, um, if you have a glue stick, just use your glue stick, that's fine. I like to put a little bit of my matte medium down and then I seal it in with some matte medium. You don't have to do that. I just always do. Well, usually do. I shouldn't say always. I never always do what I say I'm doing, but often I do this. I am not going to worry about where I put this right now. This is only our second layer of stuff. We're going to have multiple layers. Um, so right now I am just creating a surface uh, to start doing our painting on and that we're building on. So this is our first couple layers right here. Our first layer was writing. Our second layer is some collage fodder. You can use magazines. I love using magazines, images from magazines for collage. Um, book pages. Book pages are probably my favorite. I will buy a book that's like falling apart at the bookstore. Um, don't hate on me, y'all. I know that there are people out there that love books and you hate me that I use them in my artwork, but I'm going to tell you right now, don't think for a moment that because 
books are thrifted that they all get bought. Many of them, after a certain amount of time, the thrift stores throw them in recycling or they throw them away. So a lot of the books that we see in thrift stores are a lot of the books that we might personally thrift. They don't always get used or bought. So I see this as a way that I can bring additional life into a book that otherwise might end up in a landfill. I also do, just as an aside, I do try to pick books like Pulp Fiction type stuff where there's tons of them out there. I would never do that to like a first edition or, you know, something of value like that. It tends to be ones where it's easily available. They're all over the place, all the things. So I promise I try to be responsible. Don't hate me. Um, but today I'm just using my um, lovable <laughs> collage paper that I make myself. So, and like I said, no rhyme or reason. I am just throwing this down wherever it goes, is where it goes. I've put some matte medium on the page first, and then I go over it with matte medium. And you can see there's very little buckling of the page. There'll be a little bit sometimes, like that one has a little, that has a little. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, don't drive yourself nuts trying to get it buckle free. If you are adding any kind of moisture to a thinner paper, you will have most likely some kind of warping at some point. So I don't stress it. I feel like it adds character, especially when we're doing mixed media. It adds some texture. It adds character. But I don't get a whole lot, just a little bit. Most of mine lay down pretty well. All right, we're almost done here. Let me know in the comments, do you all use, um, have you done collage before? And if you have, what do you use for your collage bits and pieces? I know there's so many different things you can use. People I've seen use like um, uh, tea bags, you know, the, the not, that the tea itself comes in, but the paper part of it or the little tag from the tea bags. I've seen people use stuff like that. Um, what else? Uh, packaging. It's a great way to upcycle stuff. If you get paper packaging, you can tear it up and use it um, for collage because most of it's going to be covered over. We're gonna paint and we're gonna put layers on. So most of this ends up not being something that is seen it just adds texture but bits and pieces of it will pop through and that's where the magic happens you'll have little bits and pieces of this that will pop through and that's pretty cool all right i don't worry about this drying all the way with this part of it because matte medium is something you can add to your acrylic paints so if you're putting acrylic paint over this um i don't personally feel it need that it needs to be um dry because it'll just mix in and it will be it will be okay all right i was checking to see no i thought that i had a credit card up here i like to use a credit card to scrape and i should have one hold on just a second y'all sorry that's okay we can do this with the brush so we are going to go ahead and grab our red paint and our yellow paint I want to start by adding my darker colors so I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red if you already have an orange you can absolutely use your orange that you have you don't have to mix your own. I more and more am trying to um, use less paint colors. I'm trying to minimize some of what I have in my studio and what I use to make it easier. So I am getting kind of into mixing my own colors. I'm just doing some red and some yellow. 
getting a nice orange coming. There we go. Ooh, that's nice. we get a little matte medium mixed in there. That's okay. All right, and now I'm just going to kind of come down and play. Now, I'm not going to overthink this because, again, this is just one of many layers. So right now I am just adding some of this color on. And you can see I'm not even doing the whole page. It's okay to have bits and pieces um, showing. Now I'm going to add a little red, but I don't want a whole lot of red. I really want this to be more of the yellow and the orange colors. Um, but I do like just a little bit of the red added in just for a little dramatic surprise, if you will. So not overthinking it, just kind of dabbing it in here. And you can see right now I'm still very much just let's um, plop down some color. Let's get it going. Let's move that energy. I'm going right over the collage. I'm not worrying about it. Um, it's creating some really cool grays in there, some neutral colors, which will really be nice as we start layering more colors to it. All right, I'm going to clean off my brush. And I'm going to want to add some yellow. But first, I want to dry this a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and dry this. So hope. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it, the color looks nice, doesn't it? It's nice and vibrant. Um, I definitely want to get a little bit more yellow going on. So I'm going to bring the yellow in. Now, here's something fun, you know, fun fact about yellow um, in the acrylic paints is that it tends to be very translucent. It just is the way it is. A lot of the warmer colors, you know, the yellows, the oranges tend not to have as much um, opacity as some of the other colors do. So what I like to do with my yellow, if I want it to be a little bit more and here, you know what, I'll even show you on here so you can see. Um, some of you may know this, but if you don't know this, so let's put down some yellow. Okay, this is just the straight up yellow right here. And it's covering okay, like on the white, it's fine. But when I get over here, I mean, you can't even really see it. It just doesn't do a whole lot. Now I'm okay with that for what we're doing, but let's say I want a little bit more pop of color, which I actually do. I want this yellow to show a little bit more. I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna add just a small amount, it doesn't have to be a lot. I'm just gonna bring a little of my white in with my yellow. Now, is it gonna lighten my yellow? Yeah, it's gonna lighten it a little bit. Um, so it depends on the application. For what I'm doing, that's fine. Uh, if you're you know, needing a specific color, you might need to adjust accordingly, but like this for me is okay. So now look what happens. So you saw here where we put the yellow, you can't really see it. But now when I put it down, you see how it covers better? You can still see through it, but not quite as much. Like here, here's the yellow and here was just, here's the yellow and white and here was just the yellow. So I'm gonna be using a little of both. And again, I'm just right now, 
My goal right now is to get some color down. I am not doing any fancy painting at the moment, right? We are just, we are layering some color. I don't want to cover up all of my orange and my red because I love those. Um, but I do want to start to bring in a little bit more of that yellow, get a little bit more of a, you know, kind of that drippy honey color going on. So maybe we'll pull a little bit of orange in there. A little lighter orange. Oh yeah, that's nice. And now I'm going to start with some of my um, brush strokes. Instead of going up and down, I'm going to start kind of doing this this way and this way and this way and this way because I want some brush strokes. I want it to start instead of going up and down and up and down and up and down. I want it to start to feel like it's all coming together. And if I feel like I'm getting too much in there, I can add a little bit of orange or a little bit of red. And you see how now we've got more orange going on. I can bring more of that yellow in. There is not a specific color that I'm going for. I'm going for a mood. I'm going for this feeling of energy. I want energy. I want there to be um, some movement. I want it to be, I want it to feel like honey. Um, you know, just this whole bee type of industrious feeling, like getting things done. I'm kind of feeling that in my life right now. Let me know in the comments what you think of bees. Like when you hear, when you think of bees, what is the, like, how do you relate those to yourself in your life? Do you have some feelings around what they signify or symbolize in your life? Um, is there a certain type of energy that you think or something that calls to you about bees? For me right now, it really is. I'm so impressed with how organized they are. Um, how they're how industrious how they really get things done um, there's a lot of movement but it's all for a reason you know everything is just very um, very focused and on point and I really am feeling that in my life right now of wanting a little bit more of that in my life a little bit more of that feeling of being a little more organized having things figured out, having some routines and, and um, you know, focus and a little less overwhelm, even, but still being very energetic and busy. Um, so I'd love to hear what you think of when you think of bees and what that kind of energy means to you. All right, I've got some of my neon pink, my hot pink, whatever pink you have. And it doesn't have to be a bright one. It can be something else. I have to say, I add this color not to all my paintings, but to most of them. I love the energy of this color. It's kind of my thing right now. So I like to add just a little bit here and there. I love how when it mixes with the yellow, it gives kind of this fluorescent -y orange color. Um, I'm not sure how well it's showing up. It looks like it's showing up a little darker in the um, video. But I will say in real life, it's got this real nice vibrancy to it. Oh, it's showing up okay. It's a little more pink in real life IRL. But I like to just add it to a few places just to bring in a little energy. And it's kind of like my little sur surprise. It's like, boo, look what I got. Like you're expecting to see all these other colors. And then there's just this little wisp of a pink. And I'm just using my fingers to blend it in. You do want to be aware if you're using your hands to paint with. Um, this is a non-toxic paint, so I'm not worried about it, but there are some paints um, when you start getting into artist paints, even the student grade ones and into professional, some of them do contain um, different minerals and different uh, ways of getting the pigment that 
can be cancerous if used long term. So just be aware, read the labels. Some of them, you know, you don't want to have contact with your hands. Some of them, it doesn't matter. This one I know doesn't. It's a craft paint. It's a non-toxic. Um, so I'm comfortable doing that. But just be aware. Always be aware of the materials you're using. I know with art, we're, we're like very carefree and like, woo, I'm making art. This is fun. And it is. Um, but we should always know what we're using, like spray paints and stuff like that. All right. So that is your PSA for today. Your art PSA. <laughs> All right, so I've got a little bit of energy going on with this, you can see, and we just keep building on our page a little bit. We're just a little bit here, a little bit there, and we just keep building some layers. So now when I look at this, and you can see I'm going to show you, this is why I say don't try to make yours look like mine, because even mine doesn't look like mine. You see how different even this is looking different than this one. Um, but we still have some to do on here, so we're not we're not done here. Now, one of the things that I do like to do at this point is I like to pull in. We do have some dark in already, so I like that um, because I I want a little grounding going on here. I don't want it to be all in your face bright. So I've got these warm and energetic pinks and yellows and reds and orange that are like woo. I wanna pull it down just a little bit. So I have some of that going on with my collage fodder, which is great. But now I'm gonna bring my bubble wrap. By the way, usually I just use the bubble wrap that comes in whatever I buy from Amazon. Um, I like to reuse things as much as I can. This one, however, I just grabbed it because it was handy. Um, somebody was cleaning out their studio and I'm always on the list when people clean stuff out that they're like hey you want this and I'm like yeah let's you know give it to me yes so I've got some brand new fresh bubble wrap all right so I just use a small piece use whatever size you want but I like working with something smaller I did not have this color listed in your colors so I apologize for that um, but I'm going to use a little bit of my phthalo blue, just a touch. Um, you can use any blue you have, any blue you want. I just want to give a little bit of grounding into this. So I apologize that wasn't in yours. Um, sometimes I forget things. It happens. I'm so excited to see your bees, y'all. It's gonna be very fun to see what everybody does. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just paint some of this on here. You can use any blue you want. This was just, I've got a couple blues near me and I am having a deep love affair with phthalo blue recently. So it is kind of just, it's my happy blue. So I put some of that on my bubble wrap and then all I'm going to do, I'm using this as a stamp. I lightly press down. I don't want to press too hard because otherwise it'll smush it all and you'll get a blob. But I'm just going to add this down. All right. And I can see, I'm going to show you something here. So. You see how this is kind of a rectangle and this is kind of taking on that rectangle. I don't like that. I like my stuff to be a little more organic. So I'm going to make sure this time I clearly had done a rectangle shape there. So let's try to get that a little more organic. That'll work. All right. Probably got more on there than what I needed, but that is all right. And then while I have some on my brush, I'm just going to do a couple of quick brush strokes, very light. I don't want a lot of this. I just want a little bit of movement. I did not add more paint. It's what's already on there. 
And I don't want to take away from the yellows and the oranges and the pinks that I already have going on. All right, we're going to do a quick blowing on this with my blow dryer. Let me pause you. Thank you. I'm loving how it's coming together too. I really, really like how it starts. This is the point where we can start to see it coming together. Now with mixed media, we could go <laughs> days doing backgrounds. This kind of stuff is so much fun, just layering and layering and pushing it. And sometimes I will, sometimes I will just keep pushing a page to see how far I can go. I have done a 30-day challenge before. I don't know if you all have done anything like this, where you take a canvas and you paint on the same canvas for 30 days. You just keep adding layer and layer and layer. And it can be really fun to just see how far you can push it and how things evolve. But rest assured for today, we're going to be wrapping this up in just like about five minutes. So this part. And then we'll do the B. We'll put it all together and we'll be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of mark making on here. That is just a fancy way of saying that we're gonna do some doodling. Um, okay, we'll use this. This is where you'll wanna use like your pen or I don't wanna use this mark all yet. You can use pencil works great for that. I don't tend to like to do a marker yet because I think the markers are too kind of in your face for this step. Um, you totally can, but I like to use a pencil and or a um, ballpoint pen. So here's what I'm going to do. This is a little crazy, but again, we're working on emotion, feeling, energy. I'm going to first start by adding some scribbles in here. I'm just grunging it up a little bit and I'm doing them in a way that they kind of mimic a little bit of a um, handwriting, although I'm going all over, but they've got some of the loops and the curls and, you know, kind of that feeling of writing. All right. And then I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to go and do you know, whatever feels good. I like doing a lot of circles when I do my artwork. So you will very often find um, different circular shapes and energy in what I'm making. Right now I'm just playing with the bubble wrap, just creating some circles around the shapes that were created. I love the bubble wrap for, um, using as a stamp in a background. It's so much fun. Um, I'm just doing a few circles here. And then let's do a few hashtags. I like to often group my stuff together too versus just one or two. Not that I don't do that also, but I often will group symbols together just because it gives a little more visual um, drama and boldness to it. Not always, but I often go by the rule of three or odds, like I'll do um, three sets of something. Again, not always, but often I do that. Um, 
All right, we'll do a few. I'm going to just add a few flowers in here. And these are just very loose flowers. Think of the kind that you made when you were a kid, just the petals going around meeting in the center. Y'all, this is, anybody can do this. We are doing a pretty mixed media piece. And while I'm doing this in my art journal, this would be just as pretty done on a canvas. Let this make a beautiful um, gift for somebody like a, a um, home welcoming, welcome home. No, what is it? Home warming, housewarming. There we go. <laughs> housewarming gift. Something like this to do this on a canvas or even on the paper and then frame it for them. That'd just be a really sweet, sweet little housewarming gift. Bees are all about their community, all about uh, their home. You know, when they come together, um, it really is when they're creating their honeycomb and, you know, in captivity, their hives. Um, it is about community. It's about coming together. And they are really fiercely loyal towards each other. So I think something like this would be a really cool um, gift, you know, a, a gift for somebody who's just moved in to a new home. And then we'll do a few more little squiggles. Now at this point, you could also put words too. Let me just put love here. I don't wanna, I wanna focus some more. I really wanna bring that in. Breathe. You don't have to, because we've got the words underneath, but if you want to add any more in, you can. All right, so now, Let's go ahead, we can see here. So you can see we've got some of this dark blue in the background, right? Um, but you don't really see it because it gets pushed back. So we're gonna add a few more layers on here and then we're going to do the honeycomb. So we're actually gonna lighten things up. I like to call it, we're gonna push it back a little bit. Um, we're gonna start with a little bit of white. Oh, and I think I have some white on mine already. So I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna dip it in my white and I'm just going to go ahead and bring some of this down. Now, I do not want it to be white, white. And I feel like that's getting a little too white. So let's add a little more yellow in there. Cause I still want that yellow feel. I definitely am not looking for it to be white, but I do need to push some of this color back. And actually, I think what we might do is just add some of this white and then we'll add some yellow over it. So remember when you make this, definitely please tag me so I, I absolutely see it. Sometimes, you know, in Facebook, the way that things work or on YouTube, um, I don't always see the comments right away. So if you tag me, that way I can for sure see the work you did. Because I absolutely love seeing what you create from this, whether you do it in your art journal, you do watercolor. I know I have one of my artists who loves to take my paintings that I do, and then she does her own version, but she often does it in watercolor. And I love that. I love it when you guys take what I've offered, but then you totally make it your own. I think it is just so awesome because that really is. I, and I'm fine when you copy what I've done because, you know, that's why I share it. And that is a very valid way of learning. Art is by copying. All the masters did it. It is the way it's been done for centuries. But it's at the point where 
you can look at an idea and then make it your own, that's when your art really starts coming alive. All right. Oh, it's coming. Look at I'm liking it. We're starting. We're getting there. So let's get a little more yellow. And at this point, I'm just layering it again. I'm trying to get the feeling of what I want. I want a feeling of, I want the energy, but I also want a little bit of a feeling of serenity, you know, of calmness, of order. Is that too much to ask for? A life that is busy and energetic, but also calm and purposeful. So let's add a little more of this orange in. I added quite a bit of white with some yellow mixed in to tone that down. Now you can see, we can still see what's going on underneath, but it's definitely pushed down a little bit. Now I'm adding a little bit of this orange that I'm mixing. And it's nice and transparent because like, what, like we were saying, that yellow tends to be very transparent. I'm not adding the white in there yet, so I'm kind of grooving on the orange today. The other one I did was definitely more of the yellow, but today I think I'm really enjoying that orange. Oh, look at how good that's looking. Isn't that fun? I'm so excited to see what you all do, and you can see there's like bits of red coming through there. And at first I was like, oh, maybe I don't want the red, but no, I do. I kind of like that. I think it it is nice. So I have a little more yellow. And that yellow, because I'm not adding white to it. I've already got that nice light background from the white that I added on just a minute ago. Now the yellow just really works well. All right, what do we think? Check that out. Nice, right? And then I've lost, like I've got some of that pink still in there. There's still a little there, but I want just a little bit more, y'all. So we're going to go ahead. I've got a little left on my palette. So I'm just going to just add a little bit more in there. This cuts that. That pink just makes me happy. All right. Look at us moving right along. And then let's go ahead and dry that. And we're going to add a little bit more. And then we're going to move back to our B. All right, moving right along. As you can see, we are doing well. We're going to go ahead and add a little bit of some white on our, actually going to be a little white and yellow, which I even like better. So I'm adding that onto a fresh sheet of bubble wrap. I don't want it to be contaminated with the blue. I'm just going to lightly add that to a few spots. Let's blend it in a little bit in some of these. I'll just add white here and there.
All right. Here is what we have so far. And then I said we were going to go on to the, um, the bee, but let's do the honeycomb first here. Let's do a quick dry of this again. And then. All right. Yep, I think we got it. Okay, so now what I want to do is I've got my graphite paper and I'm going to have the shiny side down. And I want to start with these here. So actually, I might do it like this so you can kind of see where I'm going. I want them to be scattered. And I'm gonna go ahead, just use my pen to go over it. Now, if you have a honeycomb stencil or stamp, by all means, go ahead and use that. I provided this as a free alternative because I know not everybody has stamps or stencils or stuff like that. And this is also a great little art tip, by the way, if you're ever wanting to add shapes or something to your artwork, but you don't have the stencil or the stamp, um, oftentimes online you can get pretty much any kind of shape that you wanna get. You know, you can find it anywhere. So I'm just going to add a few of these. Getting a little bit of extra graphite on there, but that's all right. And we'll just add that into our design. It's a fun thing with mixed media is you really can be like, that's okay. We will just make it work. Doing mixed media and doing art journaling can be a really good way of not just expressing yourself, which is a lot of what we're doing here today, but it can be also a great way to learn to let go of perfectionism in whatever art form you do, you know, whatever kind of art that you choose to pursue, um, oil painting, pastels, acrylics, whatever it is, keeping an art journal and playing in it can be very liberating. It can help you come up with new ideas for your art it can help you to work through problems like I've got right now. I'm like, okay, I've got extra graphite that I wasn't counting on and it looks really bad. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out how to incorporate that into my design and be okay with it. And I will, I will figure it out, but you can see I've got some here and here and that. Um, and it's not that big of a deal. We'll figure it out. But having a, um, let's see, and then this one, I think we're going to have like almost in the middle here. Come on, right about there. I'm going to put this one off centered a little bit. This is the one that the honeybee 
will be kind of sitting on. I'm sorry, I realized I stopped in mid thought. I think I was, <laughs> I don't remember what I was saying now because I got sidetracked. Um, but I think I was talking just about the problem solving that can happen when you are working in your art journal. The stakes are lower than if you are doing, say, a commission piece or a piece on a canvas that you're heavily invested in. Um, the stakes are a lot lower when we're working in our uh, art journals. So it gives you a chance to really play and explore and, you know, problem solve, like I said, these things. Sue, how are you? Sue from New York, thank you so much for coming in. Y'all, Sue is going to be here. So I am starting the month. And Sue is book ending the month. She's going to be the last one. And if you have not checked out her event in the online paint party group, um, hers is September 30th. And it is really super cute. It is called Be Mine and it is adorable. So I hope that you will take a look at what she's offering and pop in on hers at the end of the month. We're like the beginning and the end. We are ensconcing the event. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use my Stabilo Mark All. Uh, is that what it's called? Stabilo All. Stabilo All. It's an aquarellable um, pencil, and it can mark on paper, glass, plastic, metal, whatever. So you don't have to have this, but I'm going to show you here one of the things I love about it. So I'm just going to go over my honeycombs that I have traced. And I'm not worried if mine are a little wonky um, because it doesn't matter. And I'm not gonna go over all of them. Like this one has come over here. Um, I'm just not gonna mark it with my Stabilo mark all. Okay. Now in a moment, I'm gonna show you the magic of these and one of the reasons why I love them so much. You could totally freehand these also if you didn't wanna use a tracer and you didn't have a stamp or a stencil. A honeycomb shape is hexagons are pretty easy. My daughter is obsessed with hexagons right now. Um, there is a video that her and my husband have been watching. They had me watch it recently. It's uh, explaining why hexagons are the best shape. And it's so now every time she sees a hexagon, she's like, Mom, look, hexagon, it's the best <laughs> So if you guys want to see it, let me know and I will try to find it. I will get the link from her and I will share it if that is something you guys want. It's kind of long. It's it's like a math thing um, that explains the math of it and um, why it's such an amazing shape and all that. It's pretty cool, actually. Very interesting. But every time I see one now, I'm like, hexagons are the bestagons. Clearly bees know that. All right, so once we have all of these done, here is where the magic of these come in. I'm gonna take a fairly small, I'm gonna take my small, you get it? That I have, I have a flat, this is a shader, a size two, just a flat, it's a small one. I'm gonna dip it in a little water and now I'm going to bring that out so that it creates this really nice shading. And I personally just love how I can do that with this. It gives it a little bit of a grunge look. 
but it also creates some shadowing, which will make this pop a little bit. You can see what I was saying earlier about the paper you use, that you can really use any paper to do the mixed media, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of wet <clears throat> mediums like we are today with the watercolor and the acrylics and the you know matte mediums, and now we're doing some water with this, that you really want a paper that can stand up to that, that can really hold that. And that's why I often will use a mixed media paper or a, um, or a watercolor paper because they tend to hold up really well to all the abuse that I put them through. You can see how this is starting to shape up a little bit. Now you could do something similar with paint too. If you don't have one of the Stabilo Alls, no worries. Um, use paint to create a similar thing or even markers or that. There's a, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. But um, if you have, I know a lot of these, if you've ever taken like a portrait class or a mixed media class, there's a good chance you may have one of these laying around. Um, and I just wanted to give you a chance to use it if you have one. If you don't, don't worry about it. Use what you have. And if I want it to come out just a little bit more, see, so I just add a little more water to it. And it's a great way to soften some of those lines and to create a little dimension coming around this. Isn't that nice? All right. Now this one, I don't want to necessarily soften the lines a whole lot but I am going to use it because it does darken them nicely. Hey, Deanna, how are you? Oh, I'm glad you watched this on replay. I hope your doctor's appointment went well for you. Thank you so much for popping in and saying hi. It's always nice to see you and I've been seeing your comments and stuff in the group. Really appreciate how much you've been um, participating and letting us know you're there and how excited you've been. It's so fun. Isn't that fun doing all these art projects? And this will, I, I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Deanna, for anybody that doesn't know, if you're coming late or you're like, oh my gosh, I can't keep up. Um, First off, I can't keep up with other artists when they do their lives and that. I have learned that I am not a keep up kind of person when other people are arting. So I have to step back and um, watch and do them on replay usually. So I am right there with you for those of you that are like, I can't keep up, I can't do it live. Um, this will be available as soon as I'm done today. This will actually already be available in the group for replay. And within the next couple of days, um, if you are in the online paint party group, I will have this in my guide. So you can just look for my name in the guides and it will be there. Um, if you are in my mixed media art journaling group, um, which is a free group for anybody that's interested where we do a lot of different mixed media projects and I share tips and tricks and all that. Um, this will be in the tutorial guides. So just go in the guide and you will see it in the tutorials there. So it is definitely available after the replay will be available after I am done today. So for those that are live, thank you for being here live. Thank you for 
hanging out with me while I do this. And I know that this particular um, project is taking a little longer. I know a lot of the acrylic projects that, that you'll see are about an hour long and the teachers are really good about keeping them short and to the point and very quick. Um, mixed media often, especially doing a page like this, does sometimes take a little bit longer. I do have projects where they're shorter, um, but often I'm like, give yourself about 20 minutes a day and you can finish some really pretty kick-ass mixed media pages. Um, but they do sometimes take a little bit longer because we're doing lots of layering and multiple steps. And, you know, sometimes I have too much coffee and then I get talking a lot and all the things. So there you have it. <laughs> um, I'm just going over these lines right now. So in the smaller ones, I'm not looking to shade them necessarily like I did the big one. The big one, I really wanted that to be the focal point. These ones, I'm just softening the lines a little bit so they're not quite so harsh. That's all I wanted to do with these. Now be aware that this is water soluble, meaning that if it gets damp, it will reactivate. So if I go to put paint over this now, it will move this around. So I generally save this for one of my last steps or if I'm intentionally wanting it to be grungy. Sometimes I will use this to give a really cool grunge look in something that I'm creating. Um, so, you know, sometimes that will be going on. But generally speaking, I will do this at the very end because I want it to not have to worry about it. Um, sorry, I got sidetracked. Not have to worry about it being reactivated. You know, if I go to do paint now, it's going to reactivate this. It doesn't mean you can't. I still will probably add some layers over this in a minute, um, but it is something to be aware of just so that you remember that and you act accordingly. <laughs> All right, and you can see these are a little lighter on here because I do have them. I think I even did these medium paint, um, but I'm always changing it up. You know, we always, we do it one way and then we change it and do it a little bit different. All right, um, let's go ahead and just add, sorry, I know I said we were going to do the um, B next. I think I, I misled you on that. I thought we were going to, and then I will admit that doing mixed media, it, you do get kind of in a zone and it's like, oh wait, just one more, but I could do this. Wouldn't this be cool? So I am gonna add a little white with a little yellow, just in some of these areas to tone it down a little bit. I just felt like it was a little harsh, not harsh, a little too bright, too dark, too something. All right. That moment when you go, oh, maybe I should have just left it. I'm just being honest with y'all here. But again, that's why we work in an art journal. One of the reasons is it helps us go, okay, I pushed it a little further and that didn't work out quite how I planned. So now how do I get out of that? And it's great because we can do that in our art journal. So then when we go to work, IRL, on our canvases and that, we're like, oh, I don't have to worry about it if I push something too far because I have a plan for getting out of that. And 
And we really used a very limited palette on this. I'm going to just show you how, so you can see how that, because I activated it with moisture, with the paint, it's smearing it a little bit. I actually did that intentionally because I wanted to um, create a little bit more of a dreamlike effect on that, push it back a little bit. Because I really want this to be the one that stands out. And you can see how now these are all just kind of pushed back a little bit, which I love. It's the day for doctor's appointments. I get that. Yeah. I hope everything is going well for everybody, um, whether you're at a doctor's appointment or not today. I hope that, you know, you're taking care of yourself and um, things are, are going well for you. I know life can sometimes throw curveballs at us. And so hopefully whatever curveballs we have are minimal. All right, a little more bubble wrap because you know I love my bubble wrap. You know that by now. And then we'll do just a little more of this pink. And you can see a lot of times with um, mixed media art journaling, and not always, your art journaling can be so many different things. It doesn't have to be this. Um, it can be just, you can just get a journal and do all your acrylic paintings in it. That is an art journal. You know, that counts. That is the same thing. Um, but for experimenting in that, it doesn't always have to be all of this. Like you can experiment in different ways and Sometimes they're fast and sometimes they're not. Oh, so thank you for watching the replay. I'm really looking forward to yours at the end of the month. I'm super excited about it. All right, so let's call this done. Let's set this aside. As I said earlier, I'm not going to finish the entire B. I'm just gonna get you going with it um, because doing all that doodling definitely takes time. Um, and we could be at it for, you know, another hour or longer, depending on what we did. So what I do want to do, though, is give you the basis for how I did my piece. So when you're looking at it, right here, um, I want to show you that I've got my B broken down into a couple of sections. Let me pull this up so that I can show you both sides while we work. You know, you can't see quite the detail. Oops, are we frozen? Oh, no, there we go. All right, it froze for a second. Um, but let's, uh, let's just look at this a little bit. Sorry, this is a little wonky, but I wanted to try to get both of these in. So you can see that we've got our middle. So we've got our head roughly from here to here, okay? So I am considering this like the head part. And then we've got a abdomen type area that I'm gonna do from this wing to this wing. And I'm gonna do it on a little bit of an arch. And then I'm going to do the end of it Let's see, which one are we at right there? So we're going to do it roughly from like here to here roughly, okay? Yours doesn't have to be broken down exactly. This is just how I'm breaking mine down. And then I'm going to do a little stripe right down here, a little booty stripe. And these have a slight curve to them. You know, you can have it be as much or as little as you want. Um, and then the wings, I have broken down. So I've got this one. 
and then this, and then the same on this side. Okay, so we've got this broken down just a little bit. And then of course we've got this here, this guy here. Oops, I don't think I brought up. All right, so then all I did is I, and you could do this however you want. So you could keep it really simple and do a design here, a design here, a doodle here, a doodle here. Um, on mine originally, I broke the wings up to create doodles like different sections, but you could totally do just one. And then within the center here, I've got a couple of lines. And I think I did one right about there. So each one of these on here is a different pattern. Um, and then I did the same up here. So kind of that, and I did these their own way. And I did everything a little different. You can choose to do it like that or differently. So here's some ideas for you as you do it. You can do dots. And you would just repeat those dots. I'm gonna bring this back down again so you can see a little closer. I don't know that having it up helped a whole lot. So let me just show you this real quick. And you can see how there's a lot going on there. And that can be a little intimidating. It can be like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. But when we look at what's really going on is we're just doing repeating patterns. So some of them might be little dots. Some of them might be swirls. So it's just a circle with a little swirl in it. And you just repeat that over and over and over again. I don't know that that's coming in real clear, but hopefully you'll get the idea. Um, you can do lines. You can do just lines. You can do triangles. I always think of these as like mountains. So you can do it like that. Or zigzags, you can also do it like that but then color them in. So if you have a line underneath here, these can be colored in. All right, you can do hashtags. You can do like a, um, like something like this and then you can you can leave it like that or you can do the same thing not even an or and this could be a whole different design where you cover color every other one so you do like a checkerboard um you can do scallops Uh, you can do, if you're doing stripes, you can do them like this. You can also color in between them. You know, color one's thicker than the other. You could do that and then put lines between them. Okay, so you get the idea that there's a lot you can do. I'm going to just do like a couple sections just to get us going. Um, but I'm not gonna do it all on film. Like I said, that would take a long time. We're already at an hour and a half. Um, and this is gonna go a little bit longer because we're gonna cut it out and paste it on. I wanna show you the process of that. So let's go ahead and start. Let's just start this guy with our dots. So I showed you the dots. And I am just using on mine, I am using a Uniball Vision uh, waterproof pen. 
I am on cardstock, just regular cardstock, and this is dry. You want to make sure this is dry. You don't want to be doing your marker on wet, okay? Um, and then let's just do this guy. Let's just do... Let's do some lines there, and then we'll do some circles. see how quickly that starts to fill in and then over here I sometimes like to do an extra line in between my things and I'm gonna do a little checkerboard This, by the way, is so relaxing to do. I love to do doodle work like this while watching TV or something like that. Um, I don't sit still well. I don't know how the rest of you are about that, but I can sometimes have issues like watching TV or something because if I don't have something to occupy my hands, I am up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. I don't know how my husband tolerates me, honestly, when I'm watching TV, but he is so good. I tease him now that he would be really good to be one of those announcers, not announcers, but the people who do the um, descriptions of TV shows, like if you've ever had that on before, and they go, you know, something like, um, she walks into a dark room. The lights are low. The music is playing soft. She bumps her knee against a chair. You know, that kind of thing. Because that is my husband with me. He's like, okay, honey, here's what happened. Or he'll narrate while I'm in the kitchen getting something. So anyway, you did not need to know all that about me. Suffice it to say, doing something like this can help keep me seated for more than five minutes, which can be really helpful for our whole family when we're trying to watch a movie or a show. All right. So all I'm gonna do is go through each of my sections and fill it in. I guess I can do this. You can see there's so much you can do to just doodle and have fun with it. And look how quickly it starts to come together, right? Now, my wings, I could choose to do just some really big designs here. You know, I could just do something like that. That's nice and big. Or I can also look at sectioning it off. So I could do like, this is one wing here, right? So I could do that. I'm going to do this one thing, this something else. Maybe I do this and this and this. And then each one of these ends up being something different. See how that is? And then let's do this like this. And I'm still mainly working with just these basic 
shapes that I showed you up here. I'm still mainly just using those, just uh, playing around with them in different combinations. And that can be a fun way to do it too, where you look and go, okay, I've got the zigzag here and I filled it in. Let me add some dots in there. So maybe I go ahead and add some dots in there. And you see, I can start to build my designs that way. I could even add some in like that. And then uh, let's see. What else do we have? Oh, we could do our lines like this. So here I'm alternating vertical and horizontal lines, keeping them as even as I can. And knowing it's okay if they're not completely even. It's really more about the repetition and the patterns that we're making. All right, so you get the idea here. And I would just keep going until I have this whole thing um, done. And then you can go through if you want to use some sparkle pens, um, the Sakura uh, glitter pens, you can totally do that, or any of those others. Like there's a lot you can do with that. But let's say that I have this all done, okay? If you can pretend for a minute, this is what my bee looks like right now, okay? We're going to just pretend it's done. I'm going to go ahead and grab my scissors. And let's just come out. I often like to cut out sections that kind of easier. If you have smaller scissors, they would probably be better than the big ones. Um, here, I'm going to I'll probably post that for you all so that you have just some scribble ideas. Um, if you look up doodling or Zentangle or henna designs, things like that, you'll get all kinds of line designs you can use. But honestly, dots and swirls and lines, like if you have those and you start combining those, you will come up with an infinite way that you can create your designs on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's cut our B out. You will, of course, wait until you've got yours all filled in to do. The doodle stuff, honestly, is my favorite. I love how relaxing it is just to put in these designs. And the more you do it, the more you start to flow with ideas. Like when you first do it, when I and you might not, when I first started doing stuff like this, I was so stressed about trying to get it right. And it was hard to let go. But once I could let go, and the more I did it, the easier it was just to like, my mind would just come up with designs and ideas. And I didn't even really have to think about it. I also find this kind of stuff to be really good to calm my mind down. It's um, when your mind is racing and you've got a lot going on in it. And I know I'm not the only one, so <laughs> I suspect there are others out there that are going, yes, I know what you mean. Um, it can be hard for me to sit still. I don't sit still well. I don't do that well. And I don't, I mean, I try to meditate, but if I'm being honest, it is so hard for me to sit for very long. Um, and I just, I try even for 10 minutes, like I try, but it can be really a challenge sometimes. Whereas this, I find this to be 
super relaxing and meditative in my in its own way and also it engages my mind so it allows my mind to relax while at the same time being active and problem solving which my brain loves to do and i suspect a lot of you are the same um, so that it is its own form of meditation and i think that's really pretty cool Gail, how are you? Oh, I'm so happy to see you. I can just see your smiling face saying hello to me right now. It makes me so happy. Thanks for popping in. So I'm sharing right now about the doodling in our on our bumblebee or on any shape that you want to do. Um you can do any shape you want, but for this project, we have a bumblebee, of course. Um, and just how relaxing it can be and how liberating it can be. And it's a great way to, um, again, practice problem solving because you've got these shapes that you have to fill in. And it's like a constant, okay, what how can I fill these in? What's going to work? What's not? Because in some areas, maybe a squiggle line or a um, spiral might not work as well as, you know, lines or something. Oh, my gosh. Okay, Gail, that was super cute. I love how you use the bee emoji. You just totally made my day with that. That was super cute. I love it. You guys, are you enjoying the bee theme? I'm loving the bee theme this month. I love all the different uh, tutorials that everybody's doing in online paint night. And if you're in my group, Mixed Media Art Journaling with Michelle, I hope that you are enjoying this and that you choose to give this a try in your art journal. Um, if you are not seeing the, um, the tracers for this, don't worry about it. I will be adding links to the tracers once uh, this is on replay. We're live right now. Uh, if you are seeing the tracers, it probably means you're watching the replay. And lucky you, you got the tracers right away. But don't fret if you don't see the tracers, they will be there shortly. And again, feel free, like if you have a stamp or a stencil, go ahead and use that. You don't have to use the tracers. You can use what you already have if you want. Um, you're almost done here. So again, you're going to pretend that this is all the way done, all the way colored in. And just like that, our beautiful bee is cut out. All right, time for a little more of my sparkling soda. All right, and last but not least, here we go, y'all. Here we go. Now, you can do things. Remember, you can judge this up by using a sparkling pen. I'm just going to see if I had one. Oh, I do. Okay, y'all, I love, love love these. I don't know if you can read it or not. I, I've got this in your supply list. It's an optional one, but this is a jelly roll. It's a, um, it's a type of pen by a company called Sakura. It's a Japanese company. And this one is their Stardust. And this is the most beautiful shimmer, like glitter shimmer you can imagine. And I don't, I'm hoping this shows. Let me, uh, Oh yeah, let me put some of this on and see if you can see it. Um, this is like a clear, 
it might be silver, but I think it's a clear shimmer. I've got this in colors also. I know I've got like a red and I think I have a blue. I love these so much. Um, but this is the one that I use the most often. Pretty sure it's clear or silver. Okay. Now let me bring this up. I've got it on that black part. Let's see if we can get it. Oh, there you go. You see how shimmery that is? Like when it hits the light, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. So if you have something like that, or if you have glitter paint you want to add on, you know, totally, you can do all of that. Um, but I think, let me just double check. I think we are at the end. We're going to adhere this and then we are done. Yeah. Um, all right. So mine is all done. We're seeing all the beautiful colors or designs. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and now here's the thing. These are optional. These are a, um, foam sticker, sticky sticker, a foam adhesive sticker. You could just use your matte medium and glue this down. Like you could do that and call it a day and you are good to go. I like to put these on because it pops it up. So it gives it a little bit of a dimension, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm going to do that. And all I do is I do several of them because I want to make sure that it stays up. If I only put like one in the middle, then it's just going to flatten around that. So I generally am pretty generous with these. Um, they come in different shapes. I have this uh, honeycomb shape one. How perfect is that for right now? Um, I've often seen them in circles or squares. I think squares is probably the most common, but I do love these honeycomb ones. Um, I do not remember where I got these. They may be from my Stampin' Up! days. They might be from Amazon. They might be from the craft store, Walmart. Basically, you can get these in a lot of places. And they come in different sizes. All right, so they're double-sided. I've got the side that I stuck on. And then I'm pulling this back side off. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick it where I want it. So I'm going to put them right here. He's coming into the honeycomb. And this will kind of um, go down a little bit as it's in between my uh, my pages here. What will happen as I work on my black in there, as I work on those, let me show you. What will happen is it'll start to darken a little bit. So you will get a lot more of that B look. Right now it's like, wow, that's a lot of yellow. But by the time I'm done, this will all be black. This will be black in here. These will be mo mostly black. And the wings are where I tend to put the sparkle. You can put it anywhere, but I tend to do a lot of that in the wing area um, because I love that feel of the wings being kind of iridescent looking. Oh, Dollar Tree has them. Thank you. Okay, Dollar Tree. I love it when we can get something from Dollar Tree that works for us. Um, so we have this. And then one last thing that I often like to do, this is totally optional, is I often will put a grunge kind of frame around mine and I just take my pen and I just do a little up and down. This is optional. This is not everybody's thing and that's okay. But I like to kind of frame mine a little bit and then I'll just, you know, put some little marks going in there, little scribble marks to kind of, um, again, it breaks it up a little bit gives it a little bit of visual interest. And 
and then I might go through and add some white in there if I want. Like at this point, you can putz around and play all you want. I'm gonna call it done for the day. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this. And when I'm done, I will share it with you. I've made this extra challenging for me because I'm gonna be working on my phone like in here. Keep yours on your cardstock until you're completely done and then cut it out and glue it on. Don't do what I'm doing right now. But I wanted us to get to a point where we were in a reasonable amount of time. I kept it within two hours, which I'm super excited about. And let me just go ahead. All right. So that's it, y'all. We did our B, our honeycomb dreams. And my intention with this today for me was to create some focus and some breathing space and to start to look at ways that I can create routines and schedules for myself, you know, keeping the whole energy of the bee in mind. Um, the idea of community and working together and not everybody doing one thing like we work together for a common goal. And so that was the personal intention I put in with what I was making today. I would love to, if you're comfortable with it, that you share what your intention was uh, in your painting, but you don't have to because sometimes that can be really personal. When you make yours, please, please, please take me in it. I really want to make sure I don't miss anybody's. I love seeing the art that you create. I cannot wait to see all of your bees buzzing around in our group, whether you decide to do it on paper, in an art journal, on a scrap of wood, wood or a canvas or whatever else. Maybe you'll do something on a jean jacket or, or whatnot. Would love to see what you're creating. Thank you so much for being here. If you enjoyed this, please like me at Inner Journey Studios on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. I'm all over the place. I would love to be friends and connect wherever you are. Thank you so much for being here. Have a beautiful, busy bee day today. Bye-bye.